Hey guys, this is Eric Wilson, field agronomist for Bex Hybrids, and I'm coming to you from a cornfield uh, and bean field in north central Iowa. And today I want to take a few minutes to talk about uh, proper sampling technique or proper plant tissue sampling technique for corn and soybeans. Uh, we're going we're gonna to cover them both. Uh, we're going to start on corn. Uh, but the first thing that you need to remember whenever you're doing a plant tissue test is you want to contact the lab that you're using, the lab that you're going to send the plant samples into. Um, I use Midwest a lot. They do a very good job. There's lots of labs that do a very good job. Uh, but the reason that you want to contact them is because there will be small differences in sampling protocol for each lab. And that, that can make a big difference uh, at the time you get the results back. So always check with them. Uh, to see if there's specific stages or there's specific sampling protocols that you need to follow for the lab you're using. Now I'm going to use and reference Midwest today. Uh, chances are they're very similar to whatever lab that you're going to use, but it's always good to check. So um, first and foremost, and this is probably standard across most labs, whenever you're sampling plant material, you want to collect the plant samples in a paper bag. Uh, just a, any brown paper bag will work. Uh, the smaller ones sen seem to be a little easier to deal with. But uh, you want to use a, a brown paper bag so that once you have that sample collected, you can, you can leave it in the paper bag and it'll dry out for a couple days before you actually put it in the mail. Uh, and also it helps to keep um, contamination from other materials off of your plant samples, such as if you were using a metal container or a plastic container. Uh, it doesn't sound like it would be a big deal, but um, first and foremost, you always wanna use a paper bag when you're collecting plant tissue samples, and that goes for corn and beans. So the next thing that you wanna, you wanna uh, do is, is pick a good representative spot in your field. Uh, you wanna pick a spot that's not too wet, uh, not too dry, um, doesn't have any compaction issues, and uh, pick a spot that you know that you could go to uh, multiple times in the field and get to it pretty easily, um, unless you're trying to diagnose a specific issue that you think you have in your field, like you're seeing nutrient deficiency and you're trying to diagnose it with a plant tissue sample. Um, but for the purposes of this, we're gonna assume that we picked a spot uh, that's representative of the field. Um, it looks pretty good here. The corn looks uh, just as good here as it does anywhere else. And we're gonna go about collecting our plant samples. So we've got corn that's approximately uh, V6 growth stage at this point. I know a lot of people watching this video, uh, they probably have corn that's a little farther along. We were late, late planting here in north central Iowa, but we have corn that's approximately V6. So if we were out here earlier and we wanted to collect a plant tissue sample, if that corn was less than 12 inches, we would actually just collect that whole sample. So we would clip it off or break it off here at the ground uh, and, and send in that whole plant for our plant tissue test. Uh, we would want to collect anywhere from 20 to 25 plants in total and send those in as one sample. And we would also want to collect from a couple different, uh, at least two different spots in the field, just so that we have something to compare against. Uh, and th in that instance, it might be in our benefit to collect from a spot that looks really good, as well as a spot that doesn't look as good as some other parts of the field, just so we have a comparison. Uh, since this plant is taller than 12 inches, what we're actually going to want to collect is the last fully collared leaf. So in this instance, it's this leaf right here. And we just break it off here at the, at the stem, and we want to collect about 20 to 25 of those, and that's going to be one sample. Now let's assume that this plant uh, next to it is, uh, is a little more developed and it's actually tassel and it's, it's thrown, uh, thrown some silks out. So in that instance, uh, we don't wanna collect the most fully developed leaf anymore. What we wanna collect is, um, here's a better, better example. Uh, let's assume for a second that 
the uh, the ear was right here. This was this was the ear on our corn plant. The leaf that we'd, we would want to collect in that instance would be the one that is below and opposite of that ear. So it would be this leaf right here. Now that might vary a little bit depending on lab, uh, but for, for the most part from what I've seen, that is the leaf that you would want to collect. And again, we want to collect about 20 to 25 of those and we're going to send them in as, as one complete sample. So you are you will have quite a handful of, of leaf tissue by the time that you collect one sample to send it in. And that's just so we can get a good representation of, of what's going on. So, uh, everything up to this point has been about corn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk here about soybeans for a little bit. Um, similar to corn, you still want to use a paper bag. Uh, there are differences of what you need to sample based on what growth stage that plant is in. I staged these earlier. These soybeans look very good. They're approximately uh, V6. I did see a few flowers out here, so they will be R1 here very shortly, but not near enough to, to have a full R1 in this field. So similar to corn, when we have small plants, and I'll say up to the uh, approximately the V3 growth stage. So we've got, if we've got three trifoliates, right? That would be the V3 growth stage in soybeans. Um, you would sample the whole plant and send that in. And, and again, you would sample 20 to 25 plants uh, and they all don't have to be in a row. You'd wanna kinda just randomly sample 20 to 25 plants in an area and send those in as your complete sample. Now, when they get bigger, especially after they start getting R1, R2, where we've got flowers all the way up and down the stem, what you wanna do to sample at that time is sample the most uppermost fully developed leaf. So let me explain that a little bit. <clears throat> In this instance, we've got uh, a trifoliate here that's that's just coming out. Um, it be close to counting that for a for a V stage. But and then we've got this other one right here. Uh, so you can see it's a little more yellow. It's a little more freshly emerged. It's not quite expanded fully yet. In this instance, what we, we would want to collect off this plant, if it was flowering, would be this one right here. This is the uppermost and most fully developed leaf on this soybean plant. So again, 20 to 25 of those, and that's going to give us one complete plant tissue sample. Alright guys, so we've now got our samples collected. Uh, there's just a couple more things, uh, tidbits of information I'm going to leave you with that I think are important to this process. Um, number one, uh, in general, it is best to sample uh, plant tissue during the cooler parts of day. Um, when you sample during the, the heat of the day, uh, you can actually get... Um, results that maybe aren't as accurate just due to the physiology of of the corn and the soybean plants during that hottest time of day so it's it's best to sample early morning or uh, mid-morning and then uh, late afternoon when when the when the temperature of the day has cooled down a bit uh, the next thing that you want to uh, be aware of is after you do collect those samples and you've got them in the uh, brown paper bags, you wanna let those samples dry out for a couple days. That's very important so that they don't mold while they're in the mail. Uh, if they do mold, um, it'll compromise your, your, your tissue sample and you have to come back out and take it again. Um, also, when you do put them into the bags, make sure that there's enough room for your sample. If you've gotta use multiple bags for one sample, uh, that's fine. You don't want to wad the, the plant tissue up when you put it in there because it won't dry out properly. Uh, another thing, if you are planning on sampling, um, taking plant tissue samples multiple times in the year, uh, a lot of times it, it will help you to come back to the same spots in your corn and soybean fields uh, so you can look at some trends throughout the season. Uh, when we do pull these samples, we're, we're really just taking a snapshot of, of what, what is in that plant at that particular time uh, of, of that particular day that we took it. So if you come back to the same locations in your corn and soybean fields, it does help to 
look at some season long trends of, of what's going on. Uh, the last thing, and, and I want to stress this one, is when you pull a plant tissue test, um, we're really just looking at what is going on for nutrition in that plant. Uh, we're not accounting for what's, what's happening in the soil. So when I do plant tissue test, uh, corner beans, I always pull a soil test along with it. Uh, that gives me another layer of information um, to interpret once we get the results back. And in many cases, it's actually very helpful. Uh, so I do recommend that you pull a soil test along with the plant tissue test, as it a lot of times can make diagnosing problems uh, easier for that particular spot in the field. Uh, with that, I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any Bex representative. They're happy to help you. Um, walk you through the process of, of taking plant tissue samples. Uh, as well as working with you after you get the samples back to, to come up with the, the best decision for your operation. So again, I'm Eric Wilson. Thank you for your time today and have a wonderful day.